You said, look, it's too easy to go from a 999 plan to a 101010 plan or 111111 plan, and that incrementally increasing that flat tax over time is just way too tempting for Congress. So there's really not that much appetite for it. It sounds good. You're going to hear a lot about it from the GOP nominees uh, or the GOP uh, uh, you know, potential nominees only because it sounds good and it sounds very good to the electorate. The reality of it is, no, I do not see it passing. What we do see in the discussions around tax reform, uh, when you really get down to the basement of the Congress building and talk with the staffers and, and the discussions that are going back and forth across the party lines, is a flat er tax, so narrowing the bands of the marginal tax brackets, continuing the elimination or reduction of various exemptions, broadening the number of people paying into the system, and finally, make no mistake, everybody paying more. Because the reality of our situation at this point is you can't cut enough in spending to solve our problem. You can't tax enough to solve our problem. It's going to take pain from both sides to actually get under control that debt trajectory that we find ourselves on right now. So, long answer, but I apologize. Yes. Any other question? Yes. I've heard that these are not really tax cuts, but just slowing down spending. Yes. yes. Is that the truth? The question is, I've heard these really aren't tax cuts, they're just slowing the growth of spending. Now you're moving into Washington talk, and you're absolutely right, it is. Uh, we are s simply slowing the growth of spending down the road. And there was a, a plan put forward earlier, the penny plan, did you hear about that one? Where we freeze spending at today's levels and then deduct 1% a year for six years and lo and behold, we're balanced after 10 years. Well, the reason why is because that ignores any of this already scheduled budget growth over the next 10 years. This is Washington speak. Yes, we are talking about slowing the growth of already agreed upon spending and that's, that's where these quote-unquote cuts are coming from. And I think that's where the, the American population gets so frustrated because it's not the way we work. It's not the way our lives work in our personal finances. But it is the way Washington works. So, Yes, Pat. Jeff, yeah. <coughs> why would any, any American though, have any confidence left in Washington after this debacle with the SEC? We put it in the stock market and everything. I mean, after everything else we've been through, uh, you know, why would anybody? Why would anybody have faith in the U.S. system? Yeah. Well, I still think it's the best one out there, <laughs> so I think we have that going for us. But I think the the in, in addition to that, uh, I, I think that's a real concern, and I think that's where you've seen President Obama shift tactics now. Uh, president Obama had governed in his first two and a half years as president as what I would call a parachute president. And what I mean by that is he was more than happy to let the Republicans and Democrats clash over these situations and then parachute in at the last minute and broker a deal that neither party was really happy with, but bottom line, get it done, get something done. And the reason that's a fantastic way to govern is because it really speaks to the independent voter. And let's remember, independent voters are generally the group of voters that uh, end up deciding those elections. So it was a great way to govern in the first few years of his presidency. But right now we've seen this shift and the jobs bill and this tax statement was earmarking or marking that point in time where we've seen the shift to campaign President Obama, where he's drawing a much harder line between the GOP position and what his is, or his position, saying that, hey, look, this is what I want to have done. I want my plan passed and, and so forth. That's that moment in time where now we're moving into this campaign phase. And the reason why is that he, his biggest concern is making sure that his base shows up next November, that they're motivated and show up. Any Democrat that shows up will vote for President Obama. He knows that. But he wants to make sure that he has a lot of them showing up. And that's what he's concerned about right now. Now, once the GOP names their nominee, then you'll see both of them come more back to, or come back to the center, and you'll see more traditional uh, campaign strategy at that.